Okay, so when you're ready, you can come into the Zoom screen again. <clears throat> Maybe somebody would like to share what happened tonight. You can just wave your hand if you'd like to share. We have lots of long time open sky houses, so I would expect you all to put your hands up immediately. Very keen. So, who's it going to be? <clears throat> ah, Atma, okay. Um, I had an interesting um, moment in the meditation. Um, so, today, in the day, I was hoovering the pond. Um, so, there were al algaes. Um, out, out inside the plants, the water plants, which I needed to hoover away. And um, so in the meditation, I, um, I was like, like I was the, the, this plant. I, I, um, I recognized that I, um, really get, got in tune and um, why I did the task that I am the plant and in the meditation I really was had this feeling of um, the, those movements and um, it yeah that was uh, very funny <laughs> okay was that for the whole time or just a moment no it was just a moment what um the the other things what happens yeah thoughts and then so it was waves of thoughts and then slow a bit less and when you said you give yourself permission to come deeper then um there was a thought okay to go down but then um that was it was a change that um this in coming going inside goes from 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 here outside in the into the middle into the center okay very nice and uh, i might say that you seem a bit nicer than i remember you it seems the sun and the air and the sea and the garden is working very well for you is that right yeah, yeah, that's that's right. All right, good, good, okay. <clears throat> okay, somebody else like to share? Jaya is raising her hand. Okay, okay, Jaya, go ahead. Um. Yeah. Ich habe wahrgenommen, dass ich hinter meiner Person war, dass ich nicht Chaya bin, dass ich nicht atme, nicht ich atme, nicht ich, not, not I'm breathing, nicht ich habe keine Gedanken, not I'm having no thoughts. Und dann kam so ein tiefes Vertrauen. And then there came a deep trust. <clears throat> and so the trust was the place where she came to in the end. Feeling Und das Vertrauen war der Ort, an den du am, am Ende hingekommen bist. Ja, das, das Vertrauen kam irgendwie so von unten nach oben und Es war vielleicht wie eine Wolke. Also es, es hat sich dann wieder, es war nicht weg, aber es hat sich so verteilt irgendwie. So the trust came from down, um, racing up, and it was like a cloud and um, distributed and spread it. Again, what, what? So the trust came from, from down, up, racing up. Yeah. yeah, the trust came from down up, and then it was like a cloud, right? Uh, yeah. And this cloud was like spreading, right? Right, 
So in your normal day, Jaya, do you find sometimes a moment where you can just close your eyes and be quiet? Yes. Does the same thing happen then? Wenn du so in einem normalen Alltag einen Moment, wo du deine Augen schließen kannst und ähm, still werden kannst, wo sowas dann ja. geschieht? Also keine Gedanken. Wenn ich bei mir bin, plötzlich kommt eine Stille und keine Gedanken. Ich nehme das so wahr. When I was myself, there comes the silence and there are no thoughts. Right, right. Very good. Lovely. Yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> good report. Okay, somebody else? That's one of the one of the Andreas. We have two Andreas. Vielleicht einer der Andreas. Wir haben heute zwei dabei. So how about Solingen, Andrea? <lacht> um, also bisher war das für mich immer total schwierig zu beschreiben, was ich in der Meditation so wahrnehme. So until now it was always very difficult to describe what I um, experience in the meditation. Right. Weil ähm, irgendwie ich dafür gar keine Worte, also es gibt keine Worte, mit denen ich das irgendwie beschreiben kann oder konnte. Because there are no words to describe this. Right. Aber, aber heute habe ich in dem Buch was gelesen, was es, ähm, wo ich gedacht, wo ich mich wieder, wo ich meine Wahrnehmung wiedergefunden habe. But today I uh, was reading something in this book where I could recognize something in um, in my awareness. Und zwar gab es da eine Geschichte von einem Studenten. There was a story about a student. Der gesagt hat, dass er um, uh, in der Meditation wie, wie einen Schmerz empfindet, aber, aber keinen unangenehmen Schmerz, sondern einen schönen Schmerz oder einen süßen Schmerz. So he, he said that in the meditation he experienced a kind of pain, but not an uncomfortable pain. It's like a sweet pain, a comfortable pain. Right. Und jetzt weiß ich gar nicht, ich glaube, dass du geantwortet hast. Ich habe es nur überflogen, dass um, ob es nicht sein kann, dass er in der Meditation seinem liebenden Herzen begegnet und das für ihn einfach nur ungewohnt ist. And I don't know if you was it who answered in, um, that it could maybe that he met in this meditation his lovely, loving heart, seinem, seinem um, liebenden Herzen begegnet ist, uh, and that it was uh, maybe unfamiliar for him. I know. Right. But if you, you experience today the same pain, I think you're not uh, in that category about the heart. Du hast den gleichen Schmerz äh, empfunden, also hast du das Gefühl nicht so in der gleichen Kategorie des Herzens, dass du in der gleichen Kategorie des Herzens warst? Das habe ich jetzt nicht verstanden. I didn't understand. Okay, so I mean, what she was just saying that that she had difficulty to describe what she experiences in meditation. Also du hattest ja Schwierigkeiten, es zu beschreiben, was du in der Meditation erfährst. Und dann sie was mentioning this man who was saying he felt a bit of pain, a kind of comfortable pain. Und dann hast du ja diesen, diesen Mann erwähnt, der in der Meditation diesen Schmerz empfindet, der, diesen angenehmen Schmerz. Ja, genau, da habe ich mich wiedergefunden. In der Beschreibung habe ich mich wiedergefunden. Yeah, in this description, I, I, I found myself. Okay. I recognize myself. Okay, fine. Now, now I understand. Yeah, it can be sometimes like that. 
Ja, es kann manchmal so sein. But uh, you've been meditating for a long time, so uh, probably I wouldn't expect it to be sometimes painful. Und du meditierst ja schon seit sehr langer Zeit, also da würde ich das jetzt nicht so erwarten, dass das so um, schmerzhaft ist. Naja, die äh, Qualität der Meditation hat, seit ich bei euch war, schon deutlich zugenommen. So the quality um, of the meditation changed or raised up since I'm coming to your house. Okay, okay, well that's nice. Because, I mean, you're somehow somebody being experienced and medit meditating regularly. I think you have those two things since many years. And so I would say you have the capacity to come very quickly to a place where it's just silent. Wenn du meditierst ja schon seit sehr vielen Jahren und du hast die Qualität einfach in so einer Meditation äh, ziemlich schnell an so einen Ort zu kommen, äh, in die Stille. Ja, ja, das geht gut. Ich habe mich auch eben, als, als ähm, du das zweite Mal gesagt hast, ähm, also als die Stimme, es ist ja in drei, ähm, in drei Stufen die Meditation und als ich das zweite Mal deine Stimme gehört habe, da habe ich mich richtig erschrocken, weil ich so tief war, dass diese, ich bin dann so offen, dass auch die Geräusche von außen ähm, immer unheimlich tief in mich reingehen, wenn draußen einer irgendwie, keine Ahnung, das Gartentor aufmacht, so leise Geräusche von draußen, die gehen dann ganz tief in mich rein, wenn ich so in der Meditation bin und so offen bin. Also viel tiefer als sonst. Und als ähm, du dann gesagt hast, wir sollen noch tiefer gehen, habe ich mich richtig erschrocken, weil das so tief in mich reingegangen ist. So, I mean, the meditation has like three phases. And when you said, uh, after a while, go more deep, I um, I was kind of, um, was heißt denn, erschrecken? Um, Shocking. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I was a bit shocked because in the meditation, all the sounds from the outside, like the birds, they're going so deeply inside me. And when your voice came, it was like kind of a bit like a shock. Yeah. Because I already feel so open in this space, in the meditation, and everything goes so deep. Right. So you, I should speak more quietly, should I, next time? Also, dann soll ich das nächste Mal ein bisschen uh, ruhiger sprechen. Or perhaps I should sing like the birds. Oder vielleicht soll ich wie die Vögel singen. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, you look very good tonight, so I'm sure it wasn't a lot of pain. Also, du siehst jedenfalls sehr gut heute Abend aus. Also, ich bin mir sicher, da war nicht so viel Schmerz. The sweet pain. Sweet pain, right, right. Very sweet Schmerz. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think I'll go to the Great Misunderstanding, Chapter 3. <clears throat> So this chapter is a lot about the ego, which is often not so comfortable. And the heading, the title of this chapter is Life is about waking up, waking up. And of course, I don't have to sell the idea of waking up to any of you guys. But uh, it's always surprising to me that many people don't even really know that there is something that could be possible. At the moment, we, we get almost every day people wanting to come to um, a, a volunteer week. We've been calling it a volunteer week. And then other people uh, write and say, oh, I'm very sorry, I can't come now. I can only come for two days. I'm sorry, I can't help you more. And when I read this, you, I can't help you more, it always rather surprises me because Uh, the, the reality about these volunteer weeks is not that the people coming are helping us, but that, in fact, we are helping them. That's the whole point of the Transformer Week. So rather than call it in future Volunteers Week, I was suggesting we might call it Transformer Week. 
and make it clear that this is a week for people who want to transform their life from pain and suffering to trusting and love, something like this, peace, harmony. I don't know if any of the people who recently did that week could would, ex would agree with me. I would be a bit interested to know, for example, because, of course, I mean, it's easy to understand when we advertise volunteer week that we're looking for people to help us. But, of course, the reality for us when we have 10 people in the house is that we're helping them and they're actually not really helping us very much. They help us a bit, but nothing in comparison to what's being offered. Would anybody like to share if they agree or not with that? How about you, Saraswati? You're the most recent person, I think. Um, yes, well, I remember when I participated in the um, volunteer week, I really um, still was um, not aware that I would help. So for me, it was kind of, I oversaw this point that, of course, it's about helping. Um, yeah, I... For me, it was a, a week of experiencing myself. So um, I'm not sure if Transformation Week also, if, if, I'm not sure if in this week I already transformed. So I think it's a bit, bit huge. But um, yeah, it was a very nice experience. So maybe we can do something with this. But did, did you see it as you helping the community or the community helping you? Well, I think the, the the name of the week still influenced me this time. So I had the feeling of it was much was much work. So I worked a lot, but um, <laughs> <laughs> sure, I was not able to see um, what effort it was for for the community to have other people in their in their life. Right, right. So you kind of did it quite well. <laughs> What's that? Well, you you didn't show your exhaustion in this week. Oh, I see. I I didn't show that I was uh, having a tough week. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, who else has done this week recently? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Arjuna. So it was six. Five months ago, yeah, I was there. I would call it Five for me ago already. Wow, amazing! Yeah, wow, yeah. I um, still think of you as one of the new boys, you know, but you're not so new anymore. I'm still the newest boy. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it was funny when I when you said Transformation Week. Um, I liked it very much, but then I looked at Andrea, and I I come up with a word that fits best for me. It's the melting week. <laughs> melting week melting because i feel like i i melt all the time like my mind was melting and melting and melting <laughs> right right okay. but actually i think it's a good idea to call it transformation week yeah yeah then I, I heard it i mean we i mean we've had it called volunteer week for a long time but just today there was another person writing and saying i'm sorry i can't come and help you know you, you but of course i mean in one way we get a lot of help in some situations we get a lot of help but um it's much more important i think for the people that come that they realize this is being offered as a transformation and maybe that will affect who is choosing to come i don't know i mean with you you were very ready for transformation and it's more clear then yeah with this wording like somebody who's more like volunteer something okay, I can help a bit. That pulls a lot of people who just want to be doing good stuff. But yeah, transformation is like, yeah, I'm ready to to change something. That's what it implies. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, thank you. So if I go to chapter three. Andreas wanting to say something. Okay, go ahead. Also ich, ähm, ich fand, dass es auch ganz viel mit hin, also ich war ja auch in der Helferwoche und ich fand, dass das ganz viel mit Hingabe zu tun hatte, also in jeder Beziehung, bei der Arbeit konnte man Hingabe üben, 
beim Hard Dance, bei der Meditation, beim Mantra singen, also praktisch jede Minute des Tages konnte man Hingabe üben. Das so I also have, I also have been to the transformational volunteer week and for me it was more about um, surrender. So you could practice surrender in the workflow, in the um, heart dance, in the meditation. So for me, it had much to do with surrendering. Right, right. But we couldn't call it surrender week because this word is basically often misunderstood, you know, this word surrender. Wir, wir können das nicht Hingabewochen nennen, weil das Wort wird oft ähm, missverstanden. Because, you know, we have the idea that surrender means something where you give away your power to somebody. So this is definitely, we wouldn't call it Surrender Week. But of course, that is part of what goes on. Because, of course, for true transformation, there must be a, there must be a change from relying on the ego and you have to surrender, basically. So, um, das würde, denke ich mal, auch viel missverstanden werden mit seine Kraft hergeben ne? oder seine Macht, seine Power hergeben. Aber natürlich hat es sehr viel was mit Hingabe zu tun. Und ja. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, there's going to be a new name soon. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, I'm sure somebody will. Ja, yeah. werden wahrscheinlich bald einen neuen Namen haben. Okay, so if I go to this chapter three on the on the first page, there must be a reason why everyone has an ego. Perhaps it is a little joke from existence. But first acquiring and then recognizing it, you have the opportunity to consciously drop it. Stepping out of the ego, you consciously know that's not who I am. When there is no identification with the ego, you go back to your natural state, like a two-year-old. The difference is that now you're conscious of it, because you can meet very cute young children, very innocent, very in the moment, and you can be touched from that meeting, But of course, it's not a conscious understanding when you're very young. And so maybe the acquiring of an ego is a kind of device to um, go through some process, which in the end brings you back to that innocent state. But now, now the innocent state is a conscious innocent state. So it has a different, completely different quality about it. So, um, so I've got a few notes from this chapter I'd like to go through. <clears throat> So there's a question actually in some of these chapters i i received a lot of questions and then i tried to answer the question so there's one here kids are so spontaneous and present why do you grow out of this and into ego and there's a lovely lovely joke which i also put it in the text last night a kindergarten teacher was observing her classroom of children while they drew. She would occasionally walk around to see each child's artwork. As she got to one little girl who was working diligently, she asked what the drawing was. The girl replied, I'm drawing God. The teacher paused and said, but no one knows what God looks like. Without missing a beat or looking up from her drawing, the girl replied, They will in a minute. <laughs> okay. Not so funny about that. Anyway, so um, basically for, for children, they're very spontaneous and fearless. 
and we can feel the innocence, we can feel their presence, we can feel their their joy, very often a lot of joy. This morning I went to the farewell party for uh, Amelia's teacher. And uh, so I was sitting there for about an hour and there was, uh, I think there's eight or nine kids in her class and they're all kind of around. And there's a few brothers and sisters around who are also very sweet. And the whole energy of these little kids, you know, is, is so, it's so touching, actually. So touching. So this isn't so different from what happens when we finally see the ego for what it is and come back to our purity, our innocence, to the self. The quality of, of our being is the same, actually. It's nice to see tonight that Atma is, is looking relaxed and smiling because normally she had a face with a, a, a radioactive no on her forehead, but that seems to have disappeared completely. Very nice. So we adults get lost in the idea of being separate. Why does that happen? Why not always live in truth? As babies, we don't have much sense of ego. In the beginning, a baby doesn't feel any separation between herself and her mother. Then as he learns that she learns that everyone and everything has a name that distinguish it from everything else, the sense of separation gradually increases. Slowly, we develop an ego. It happens in a natural way. We, we're, not, we're not really aware that something like ego is happening. It just happens over 20 years of our life. It seems completely natural. And all our friends are going through the same process. So there's no reason for us to imagine that this is maybe not so useful. So as this sense of separation leads to the formation of an ego, so the identification with a false self develops, which inevitably leads us to suffering. I think everybody tonight has enough experience to know that if you get caught up in, in something in your ego, some kind of structure very often, which keeps repeating, it's almost impossible not to just believe it and take it and let, let it affect you, let it actually give you suffering, for example. It's very difficult. We can investigate the nature of the ego by becoming quiet and looking inward. We can say the ego gives us an opportunity to develop consciousness. And this, of course, is, is what's happening in the daily life of the Open Sky House, that we are doing our meditations. Then in between, we're cooking lunch or we're cleaning some guest rooms. We have many, many tasks in our community. And while we're going through these tasks, we can see, if we're watching enough, we can see what, what is coming up. What are, what are the structures that keep repeating? And of course, we can do this wherever we are. You don't need to be in a spiritual community to, to be aware of these structures. But from my own experience, it seems to me that in a group of people who are doing a similar process, because everybody who's become a resident in Open Sky House, we've, we've all decided we want to go through this process. And we don't want just to self-realize. We want to be self-realized and empty, living in trust. And so this requires a little bit more than the basic self-realization. Self-realization, of course, is a very dramatic and very beautiful, very important moment. But what then? What then? And I can say in my own case, because it's now uh, um, 30 or 40 years, I've been living in that way, and I see that there's no end, actually. I always, I always 
in, well, certainly when I was starting, I always had the sense that, you know, at some point I would achieve something, I get the gold medal, and then my life would be just perfect, perfect forever and ever and ever, you see. But of course, it's not like that. How could it be like this? So self-realization is not really the complete possibility. The complete possibility is that we continue to look and become aware of anything coming from the past, which we can call ego, and to uh, facilitate that issue, whatever the issue is, to simply disappear, to melt away. And as this goes on, we can sense inside us a kind of expansion, a kind of uh, lightness, and a deep sense of trust. And probably we can see this trust being reflected back into our life. So yesterday, uh, I think most people on the screen knows this, but we've got a few guests. In the last months, we've been, well, last month, last two years, uh, the owner of our house, the new owner of our house, or the second owner of our house since we lived here, has been only interested in getting us out of the house. He was not interested in any kind of relationship with us. Uh, in two years, well, actually, it's, I think, six years he's the owner. In six years, he never once, not even once, spoke to us to understand about us. So anyway, he created a court case two years ago with the point of getting us out of the house. And uh, yesterday, the judge decided <clears throat> that we are fully protected. And so you could say we won the court case because... Uh, the owner can still get us out of the house, but it's not going to be easy. And so the judge yesterday at the end of the hearing, which went on for an hour and a half, a very long hearing, a very good judge, I would say, who carefully um, went into the evidence. And at the end of it, he basically said he saw that we're basically protected. And also he suggested that in the next month the the uh, the owner of the house and us we should come together and come up with a kind of um arrangement a kind of uh, reconciliation together and for us we, we made it immediately clear in the court that for us we want to buy the house so this to me is a good example of what happens when we can really trust what's happening in our life. I had a, a, a funny moment uh, two or three years ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, maybe just before the court case. Um, I, I was driving into the village and I got a strong intuition. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. We carried on looking for a, a new place. And in fact, we, we did find a new place. It, it, this new place that looked like it had been designed exactly for our community. It was a huge place in the countryside. Uh, but in the end, the local council didn't want something like a community living in that particular place. It's a kind of tourist place. Well, potentially, it could have been a tourist place. Anyway, now, um, after this happening yesterday, it confirms this voice that came up inside me maybe three or four years ago, which basically told me, you're not leaving, you know, not leaving. And so I've had this trust in some way. I mean, I've continued to go through all the process of the court to defend our position, but at the same time, Something inside has always been relaxed in the knowing that probably we're not leaving. Something will happen. And the other thing that's happened is that um, the in the last few years since, since the house was sold, several of us getting older got a heritage from our parents. And so we probably are going to have enough money that we can then arrange a bank loan. 
So um, this is another thing that has just happened along the way, which we can also trust. And so it, it, it looks quite exciting, but we don't know if the, the owner of the house wants to sell it. Basically, he doesn't want to sell it. He basically wants to develop it into something that will bring him a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of profit. So we don't know for sure what's going to happen. He may not want to sell it. But if, if he does want to sell it, we now have the possibility of buying it. So this is actually quite a lovely moment to see that if you really deeply trust existence, it seems that existence supports what is right or what is good for existence, something like this. Okay. And then there's a, another question. If I understand correctly, ego is like a teacher. And I replied, yes, you can say that. It could be that the point of human life is simply to become free and that life itself is set up as a vast laboratory to help you. Instead of seeing your daughter playing happily and thinking she is so joyful and I am not, you can see it as a reminder from your life that you are not currently living that, that joy. You, you are reminded of your sense of separation and you can take the opportunity to become aware of it. Then going out of the Garden of Eden and finding your way back can be the ultimate reason for your life. You will find the self, not yourself, but the self. We are all actually perfect as we are, even if we are lost. It's totally all right to be lost. Living life from moment to moment as it unfolds gives us an opportunity to become clear and conscious. The whole point of life, you could say, or having an ego, is to go through this struggle and to finally become clear. Over many years, I've grown up believing that I am my thoughts, I am my body, I am my feelings. And out of this I have constructed me, my ego. If you investigate for yourself, you can't find this me. Yet, with every experience in your life, you refer back to me. I think this, I believe that. I know this, I like this, I prefer that. I judge this situation to be like that. Everything is referred back to I, with the assumption that there is an ego, sorry, that there, with the assumption that there is an I, an ego, and that is who we are. So I also, the other day, discovered this poem from Rumi. I also, I think we put it in the, text for tonight and if you're in the community I sent this around to everybody I, I strongly recommend this poem because in a sense this poem outlines exactly what we're doing in Open Sky House this being human is a guest house every morning a new arrival a joy, a depression a meanness some monetary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if there are a even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new del delight. I, I had a funny experience of this about two weeks ago because I've been living on the trust that we're not leaving this house. But of course, I've been busy with the defense of the court, in the court. And then um, about two or three weeks ago, Krishna uh, was looking for a new place for us. And he found a beautiful castle. It's about one hour away from our house. He we went to see this castle and 
at the end of the visit, it was such a beautiful castle that I was feeling, well, maybe I would like to leave the house. Maybe it's better we leave the house. If we can live now in this beautiful castle, the castle has water all around it. So it's really a proper kind of castle. All my dreams of castles from being a kid, you know. And um, so this was very exciting because um, previously I had seen that we're not leaving. But then suddenly this castle came up and I immediately thought, well, this could be even better than where we're living now, you see. So this is exactly what it's saying here in this poem, you know, that maybe the reason that we have to leave this house is because we have to live in this castle, see? And that castle is going to be cheaper than this house. Amazing, yeah? You can buy a castle for about 1.2 million. And this place is going to cost more than 2 million. Anyway, so you never know, you see. You never know what is coming you, know? you never know what could be coming the dark thought the shame the malice meet them at the door laughing and invite them in be graceful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond you see this is really powerful stuff this poem and this is something which we don't always really understand because if we're suffering from some situation or we have some kind of pain, then we don't easily accept it as we accept a bowl of ice cream and uh, strawberries. You know? There are things we like and things we don't like. But this poem is suggesting a attitude of like, yes, let it all come, you know, let it all come. Because everything that comes, this poem is suggesting is an opportunity to see where you are, what you believe in, what is your desires, what is how big is your ego. And I remember that at, I had been to visit Papaji and I had a very good experience in the first uh, month, I think it was, the first month. And then uh, after some more weeks, I made a decision that I would rent a house, a guest house, ha, ha, ha. And then I would bring all my, my things because I'd been living in the south at Osho's ashram. I'd been living there. I had a lot of stuff. I'd bring it all up to Lucknow and I would make a decision to stay with Papaji. So then I, when I was leaving a few days later, I went to see him. We had a bit of a chat. And he told me that when you come back, you should uh, rent a house and run a guest house for my people. So that's what I did. I came back and I had found a house, brand, brand new. It was a brand new house on the outside of Lucknow in the countryside. Um, and I rented it. The owner was a very nice guy. We got along very well. And uh, I would then I would then furnish it and I rented it out for people who were staying one week or one month, something like this. And uh, gradually, or even quite quickly, I came to realize what this Rumi poem is suggesting. Because gradually, all these different guests they all created some kind of response inside of me. I remember one, one day there was a guy, he arrived, he put his suitcases in his room, and then he disappeared somewhere. He came back, I don't know, late at night maybe. And then another person would arrive, and he would open his suitcases, and he put all his clothes and all his stuff on the shelves and in the cupboard and so on, everything nicely organized, you know. And then I'd see my judgment, you know, that the guy, one guy was like just dropping his suitcases and the other guy, well, he was a very careful guy putting everything ready, you know, and I would give him a few extra gold stars. So this was a constant game that would go on over more than four years. I ran this guest house, yeah. And literally, as this poem says, literally people would come into the house and something would happen. 
and I would get to see something about John David. It wasn't always comfortable, of course, but it was remorseless, I would say, over, over those four years. So many things happened in this guest house. And um, at some point I came to see that all these things were a great benefit to me personally, because I noticed that when I saw things about my ego very clearly, they would disappear. They just disappeared. So it seemed that the most important thing that has to be done is that you become aware of certain structures. See. So this looking is very important and we need some kind of catalyst to really look. And of course you can look wherever you are in your life. You don't have to live in an ashram or monastery or open sky house to, to achieve that. But as far as I can feel from now living in the community and watching what happens, it's much easier to do this in a group of people who have chosen that work. You know, they've chosen that work. Of course, in the society, you also get many, uh, many feedbacks, especially in a relationship. You you tend to get many. Uh, moments where things are clearly seen you know anyway we often talk about a spiritual journey but there's nowhere to go to and there's nothing to find it's already all here we are already exactly as we should be. We all believe we are making our life happen. But in fact, when we become quiet, we find that the self is just happening and we will always be, always be taken care of. We will have the experience we need in life to learn the lessons we need to learn and we will be supported by existence. So this is this is very very important because in one way we we have all everybody on the screen has made a decision to transform. But it's also very important to know that although we we're going through a kind of transformational process, in any moment of that process we are completely okay the way we are. We're never wrong, you know, we're never wrong. So this is a, a little bit strange paradox, you know, between wanting to transform, wanting to change, wanting to have more understanding, and at the same time, whatever is happening in our life, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, is exactly what's supposed to happen in this moment. So this is an enormous trust, of course. If, when we come to really understand that, then there's enormous trust. Yesterday lunch time, we all went out, all the, I don't know, more than half of the community went out from the court to a very nice restaurant, and we all got a little bit drunk. And that felt very spiritual, very good. Find out who you are and roar your roar, and dance your dance. The divine absolute is the essence of every human being, of all the birds and animals, the rocks and trees, and of the whole planet and the entire universe. We are also ordinary men and women, and this interface between our ord ordinariness and our divine nature is the essence of our misunderstanding. Okay, so I've got a bit more, but maybe we bit talk about the first part. Does anybody like to uh, dialogue with me about this first part, about the ego, about transformation, about the guest house? Okay, Jaya. Bei mir ist es so, wenn ich im Open Sky House bin, ist es wie in einer Oase. 
Ich glaube. Can you translate, uh, Robert? Im for, me it's like, for me, it's like this. If I'm being in the open sky house, it's like being in an oasis. Right. Im okay. Alltag kann ich meine Strukturen eher erkennen. Das sehe ich, wenn mein Ego urteilt oder das kann ich beobachten. So in the everyday life, I can more easily see my judges. Um, I can observe more my structures. Well, may maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, my own impression is that it's easier in the open sky house, but you're Vielleicht, somebody... Yeah. You're somebody who has been working in this area for many years. So you've been mm. meditating also for many years. So you have, in your life, you have uh, created a kind of process which works for you. Mm. And also you do the kind of work with people. Which so, and bring up, it's, it's yeah, and no, no. like you work in a guest house. Meine right? Erfahrung ist, dass es in einem Open Sky House <laughs> einfacher ist. Ich meine, du hast dein Leben ja so eingerichtet, dass für dich funktioniert, wo du das auch sehr gut beobachten kannst. Hmm. Yeah. For, my, for myself, I mean, um, when I was with um, Papaji in Luck now, I had this big opening and everything changed. Als im Lackner war, hatte ich jetzt eine große Öffnung und alles hat sich in meinem Leben verändert. But I could, I could never say that from that day, which is now about 30 years ago, that from that day I've been living in uh, silence, peace, um, happiness, all these Aber ich könnte things nicht, forever and ever. Ich könnte nicht sagen, dass von diesem Tag an, wo dieses passiert ist, ich äh, immer und zu jeder Zeit in Frieden und Stille gelebt hat. Ähm, so war das nicht. So, I can say over this 30 years, the process of being aware of things which prevent me being totally free has gone on over 30 years. So, ich kann sagen, dass über die 30 Jahre seitdem dieser Prozess weitergegangen ist, äh, um das Prozess des Gewahrseins und des Freiwerdens. And in my own case, I can say that in that 30 years, what's happened is uh, a greater and greater trust has happened. Und so in meinem eigenen Fall kann ich sagen, dass über die 30 Jahre auch immer größeres Vertrauen sich entwickelt hat. For example, I remember one of my guests in this house in Lucknow. He was from Belgium and he's kind of educated guy and he stayed in my house. Ich kann zum Beispiel sagen, da war ein Gast aus Belgien, ein gut äh, situierter Gast, äh, der in meinem Haus untergebracht war. And he told me, you know, John David, it's, it's very lovely how you're living here. But when you get back to the West, you'll never find such a good situation. Und er sagte zu mir, um, ja, John David, es ist schön, wie du hier lebst, aber wenn du mal zurück zum Westen, in den Westen kommst, uh, wirst du nicht an so, einem, an so einen guten Ort yeah. kommen. And, uh, you know, I hadn't, I, I'd been living in India probably five years by that time. In der Zeit habe ich fünf Jahre in Indien gelebt. Of course, I had no money. Ich hatte kein Geld. But somehow I constantly created a little bit of money that I needed to live. Irgendwie habe ich immer ein bisschen Geld kreiert, um doch leben zu können. But his words made me feel a little bit nervous about coming back into the world, into the Western world again. Aber seine Worte haben es mich dann doch ein bisschen nervös gemacht, um wieder in den Westen zu kommen. And I remember when I finally flew from Australia, because first I went to Australia, and then from Australia I went to India, and then from India I flew to Europe, to Germany. Ich kann mich erinnern, Australien kam, ich bin von Indien nach Europa geflogen. 
So this was a kind of nervous moment because when I arrived in Germany, I had minus, I can't remember now, but I had minus a few thousand euros. Can you translate, Rada? She's in the background now again. Okay. Now you're in the foreground. You're a bit cuter than Rada, but uh, maybe. Uh, who, who was I talking to, actually? Jaya. Jaya, just say hello, and then we get you on the screen, which is a bit nicer. Hello? Jaya? Yes. Ah, okay, now you're back. Good. So, um, what was I saying? Ah, oh, I remember. So I arrived in Germany, and uh, I went for a walk in the small town where I was staying. I had just come from being in India for one year. So in India, as you maybe know, you can have lunch for just a few euros. Um, I think probably three euros would give you a very good lunch in, uh, in India. And then I went into a coffee shop and I discovered that to buy a coffee in Germany is the same as buying a lunch in India. And I got very scared, you know, I was like, how am I going to manage? I arrived with minus money and now everything is so expensive. I couldn't, I, I just didn't know what to, to do. And so in that moment, I, I, you could say I lost my trust. But of course, life went on. Things happened. I survived. In fact, I did better than survive. Then this community happened. And then this house happened where we're living, beautiful house. And then that something else happened. We have this house in Denia. This also happened. And so if I would look back on the last uh, 20 years living in Germany, I arrived with kind of minus. And now I'm definitely very much living in plus. I live in a beautiful house. I've got lovely children, lovely people around. So everything actually has been constantly working out. And as these things can be seen to work out, I notice that my deepest trust gets also wider and wider. And I think this, at the same time, there needs to be a constant looking to drop off elements of the ego that we don't need anymore. I mean, we need to have a bit of ego. <clears throat> we need to have a bit of mind. Otherwise, we couldn't function. But uh, these sort of deeply entrenched structures of the ego, of course, bring us a lot of suffering. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Somebody else like to uh, dialogue about the subject of the ego? Lakshmi? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I want to say since I'm in the community, um, I feel that uh, everybody is my can be or is my teacher and mm -hmm. I see and I can see all my old um, festgefahren was heißt das my old um, stuck stuck yeah stuck structures and that's of course a, a huge possibility to um step out slowly slowly sometimes very slow <laughs> and sometimes a little bit um faster well, you, but it's you, i think you've had some moments when it was quite fast actually yeah yeah thank you <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. um but it's worthwhile it's really worthwhile to have people around that who are so loving and um, 
and clear to point out uh, when they see something, what I do, for example, and uh, tell me. Yeah, that's right. what's wrong. And of course, sometimes, yeah. you know, it, it can be not what we want to hear, you know, it's not always maybe yeah. what we hear. But if we're not too attached to our ego, which I think most of the people on the screen tonight are, in fact, not so attached um, as normal, normal, regular people are, then mm -hmm. you, you have a chance to welcome these moments mm -hmm. where you're given some kind of insight. Because mm -hmm. probably in the society, um, most of the time, people are not really sharing what they really yeah. think about you. Yeah, Maybe yeah. They mm -hmm. have some vested interest to to kind of keep the connection easy, or they'd like to be mm -hmm. friends or something. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it maybe doesn't help so much, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Okay. Maybe one more, and then I've got a little bit more. <clears throat> Okay, Amanda. Go ahead. So yeah, my parents, they were coming, my parents, and um with this I, I can I can see sometimes some ego structure. So I was doing the bad for my parents <laughs> and my mom immediately wanted wanting to say how I should do it. And I, I could, I reacted, you know, I, I could see myself reacting and I watched it also afterwards. I watched myself and yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> sometimes I can just watch it with my parents, like, like that I'm just on, like, oh, they're telling that. And I, I, I watched this, but yeah, and this time I just reacted too. And it was also part and. And mm. with the family, it's kind of parents, more strong. Parents are the probably the best possible yes. um, catalyst, you know. Yes. Because really... course, you've, you've been having many years this discussion with your mother about how to make your bed or how you didn't make your bed or such things, you know, from when you were mm. little and all the way. And she's got her idea. And, of course, being an official mummy, she definitely thinks she's got the right technique and you're just her daughter. So how could you possibly know how to make a bed? You know, so um, <laughs> mothers are rather powerful at creating a kind of uh, um, strong mirrors, let's say. You know. Yeah, they're oft always the perfect mirror where I am or where my structures still are. And so it's always nice to come back and see <laughs> had to change us also it's right. a good mirror yeah even if it's not so comfortable sometimes yeah not always but another another it's always if, good to know. if you don't have a parent you could also try going camping with a close friend you know especially <laughs> in germany when it's always raining something like that is also very very interesting when you you have some very intense situation like you know, putting up the tent in the rain, for example, <laughs> and then getting inside when you're already wet, you know, and then you're sharing this little tent with, you know, somebody else, and they have different ideas than you have, and suddenly it's, you know, there you are. So camping is a, is a great place to, to check your enlightenment. You can check your enlightenment going camping. Yeah, yeah for me, it's, it's the opposite. Camping is like the no nothing there's nothing there there's just love <laughs> but i remember as you mentioned that i did this with my boyfriend and he was so upset when it rained and we had to put it out in the rain and he was there was a lot of trauma coming up in him and i was totally relaxed <laughs> right, right. yeah well you're kind of professional camper so you don't really <laughs> count <laughs> Okay, very good. So I have a little bit more. Um, another question, <laughs> a rather good question. How can I live when I'm in the state of nothing? How can I live when I'm in the sta this state of nothing? 
You don't have to do anything. It all works by itself. While you are busy paying the rent, life is happening anyway. Have you ever thought how that happens? The sun comes out, the rain falls, the rice grows, babies are born and people die. It's all just happening. While you think you are still doing it, it's happening. And if you stop doing your life, it will absolutely still happen. While you're busy thinking, I am doing my life, life is just unfolding. So this, this is a very beautiful paragraph because this is in a way what we want to achieve. You know, maybe we got hooked into a spiritual life by ideas of enlightenment, but it seems to me in the reality of what's possible, this is a much better description, you see, that you can observe your life just unfolding. And you can, you can look and see kind of the rightness of that, you know? And then you can come in, a, in some kind of synchronicity with your destiny, and then trust happens, and so on and so on. It goes by itself. Natural happiness is actually who we are. It is the same nature as the birds singing. When small children are playing together, they feel happy when they build their sandcastles on the beach. And they also feel happy when the waves come and break them down. It is not really complicated. This joy is natural. We just have to make contact with it. The only thing preventing this contact is all the conditioning in our minds that tells us life should be a certain way. I mean, anyway, there's a very nice joke. I, I like this joke. An old man is sitting in the park, crying his eyes out. A young jogger comes by and asks him, what's wrong? The old man says, I'm a multimillionaire. I have a great big house the fastest car in the world. And I just married a beautiful blonde bombshell who satisfies me every night, whether I like it or not. The young, the young jogger says, man, you have everything I've ever dreamed of. What could be wrong in your life that you're sitting in the park crying? The old man said, I can't remember where I live. Sorry, this is a joke for the old ones. You know, most of you are too young to appreciate this joke. So unfortunately, you know, a lot of people hardly know that it's possible to live with this inner happiness. This is really a tragic thing, yeah, that in our education system, we don't somehow tell people this, if you like, essential knowledge. It's really, I don't know, maybe we have to think about it in Open Sky House. Maybe we have a, a kind of uh, something we need to do, you know. It would be so wonderful if somehow we could make something to, to bring this home to everybody. Because the spiritual the people involved in spiritual work is actually very small compared to the whole population. And we've created a society that is based on desire and greed. Yeah, that if we don't go and buy something, if we don't go and do something, we can't be happy. Or if we buy that new car, we'll be happy. Or if we get that new husband, we'll be happy. You see? It's always on the outside. It's always uh, encouraging something like desire. That desiring something and then getting your desire will make you happy. And of course, it does make you happy for a few moments, but it doesn't really make you fundamentally happy, of course. And I think almost everybody here are, are mature enough to know out of relationships, perhaps, or out of your regular life, 
but you had these moments where you were desiring and you thought if I get this, you, you would be very happy and you were happy for a little while, but then of course it changes and then you start desiring a bigger car or a bigger house or something. Okay, any comments about the joke of the old man? Because I'm getting to the point, guys, where I, I keep forgetting where that beautiful blonde bombshell is, you know? It's really tough when you get old. I can't even remember their names anymore. Anyway, anybody um, like to comment on this last part? Okay, good. So if you're not going to comment, I'm not going to carry on. So we'll finish now. Okay, very good. Thank you. And we'll do this meeting again, of course, next when uh, next Thursday at eight o'clock. And um, I would also remind you that on the weekend of the twelfth and fourteenth, we have a our open weekend. I think we're celebrating 20 years of the community and we have many people coming. I think we already have something like 75 people booked and every, almost every day we get a new booking. So if anybody has time to come and help, uh, that would be very much appreciated. In this case, we, we definitely need helpers, but uh, um, you can also have a good time because on each, each morning and after, Afternoon, we have uh, three workshops. You can choose between three workshops. There's painting, there's dancing, there's clay modeling, there's a sound journey, lots of nice things actually. So it should be a very good weekend. And on the Saturday, we'll have a concert. We have an Indian musician, tabla player who will come and play. Is he, is he somebody who was here before? Um, I haven't met him before, but Indira has. Ah, okay. okay. In India, he played in your satsangs in India. Did he? Yes, yes. Must be yeah, many ago. years ago. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. So anyway, to have an Indian tabla player will probably ensure that it'll be a brilliant concert with our Open Sky Band. So this is on Saturday evening. If you're busy, you can also just come for the the Saturday uh, evening for the concert. Okay, good.